St. Augustine, commentary on the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 1 to 13, following. What said he further? The world can't hate you. What is this but the world can't hate its lovers, the false witnesses? For you call the things that are evil good, and the things that are good evil. But me it hates because I bear witness concerning it that its works are evil. Go you up to this feast. What means to this? Where you seek human glory? What means to this? Where you wish to prolong carnal joys, not to meditate on eternal joys? I go not up to this feast because my time is not yet full come. On this feast day you seek human glory, but my time, that is, the time of my glory, is not yet come. That will be my feast day, not running before and passing over these days, but remaining forever. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. But when his brethren were grown up, Then when, then went he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Therefore, not to this feast day, because his desire was not for temporal glory, but to teach something to profit, to correct men, to admonish them of an eternal feast day. To turn away their love from this world, and to turn it to God. But what means this? He went up, as it were, in secret to the feast. This action of the Lord also is not without meaning. It appears to me that, even from the circumstance that he went up, as it were, in secret, he had intended to signify something. For the things that follow will show that he thus went up on the middle of the feast, That is, when those days were half over, to teach even openly. But he said, as it were, in secret, meaning not to show himself to men. It is not without meaning that Christ went up, as it were, in secret. Because he himself lay hid in that feast day. What I have said as yet is also under cover of secrecy. Let it be manifested then, let the veil be lifted, and let that which was secret appear. All things that were spoken to the ancient people Israel in the manifold scripture of the Holy Law, that things they, what things they did, whether in sacrifices or in priestly offices or in feast days, And in a word, in what things soever then worshipped God, what things soever were spoken to and given them in precept were shadows of things to come. Of what things to come? Things which find their fulfillment in Christ. Whence the Apostle says, For all the promises of God are in him, yes. To Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20. That is, they are fulfilled in him. Again he says in another place, All happened to them in a figure, but they were written for our sakes, upon, the, upon whom the end of the ages is come. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1. And he said as well, For Christ is the end of the law. Romans chapter 10 verse 4. Likewise, in another place, let no man judge you in meat or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, or of a new moon, or of a Sabbath days, which is a shadow of things to come. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16 and 17. If therefore all these things were shadows of things to come, 
Also the Feast of Tabernacle was a shadow of things to come. Let us examine then of what thing to come was this feast day a shadow. I have explained what this feast of Tabernacle was. It was a celebration of Tabernacles because the people, after their deliverance from Egypt, while directing their course through the wilderness to the land of promise, dwelt in tents. Let us observe what it is said, and we shall be that thing. We, I say, who are members of Christ, if such we are, but we are. He, having made us worthy, not we having earned it for ourselves. Let us then consider ourselves, brethren. We have been led out of Egypt, where we were slaves to the devil as to Pharaoh, where we applied ourselves to works of clay, engaged in earthly desires, and where we toiled exceedingly. And to us, while laboring as it were at the bricks, Christ cried aloud, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Thence we were led out by baptism as through the Red Sea, red because consecrated by the blood of Christ. All our enemies that pursued us being dead, that is, all our sins being blotted out, we have been brought over to the other side. At the present time, then, before we come to the land of promise, namely, the eternal kingdom, we are in the wilderness, in tabernacles. They who acknowledge these things are in tabernacles, for it was to be that some would acknowledge this. For that man who understands that he is, that he is a sojourner in this world is in tabernacles. That man understands that he is traveling in a foreign country when he sees himself sighing for his native land. But while the body of Christ is in tabernacles, Christ is in tabernacles. But at that time he was so, not evidently but secretly, for as yet the shadow obscured the light. When the light came, the shadow was removed. Christ was in secret, he was in the Feast of Tabernacles, but there hidden. At the present time, when these things are already made manifest, we acknowledge what we are journeying in the wilderness. For if we know it, we are in the wilderness. What is it to be in the wilderness? In the desert waste. Why in the desert waste? because in this world where we thirst in a way in which is no water. But yet let us thirst that we may be filled. For blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6 And our thirst is quenched from the rock in the wilderness. For the rock was Christ, and it was smitten with the rod, that the water might flow. But that it might flow, the rock was smitten twice, because there are two beams of the cross. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4, Numbers chapter 20 verse 11. All these things then, which were done in a figure, are made manifest to us, and it is not without meaning that it was said of the Lord, he went up to the feast day, but not openly, but as it were, in secret. For himself in secret was the thing prefigured, because Christ was hid in that same festal day, for that very festal day signified Christ's members that were to sojourn in a foreign land. Then the Jews sought him on the feast day, before he went up. For his brethren went up before him, and he went not up then, when they supposed and wished that this too might be fulfilled, which he said, not to this, that is, the first or second day, to which 
you wish me to go. But he went up afterwards, as the Gaspon tells us, on the middle of the feast, that is, when as many days of that feast had passed as, they, as there remained. For they celebrated that same festival, so far we can understand, on several successive days. They said, therefore, where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. Whence the murmuring of strife? What was the strife? Some said, he is a good man. But others said, nay, but he deceives the people. We must understand this of all his servants. This is said now of them. For whoever becomes eminent in some spiritual grace, of him some will assuredly say, he is a good man. Others, nay, but he deceives the people. Whence is this? Because our life is hid with Christ in God. Colossians 3.3 3. On this account people may say during the winter, this tree is dead. For example, a fig tree, pear tree, or some kind of fruit tree, it is like a withered tree, and so long as it is winter, it does not appear whether it is so or not. But the summer proves, the judgment proves. Our summer is the appearing of Christ. God shall come manifest, our God, and he will not be silent. Psalm 1 verse 3. Fire shall go before him, that fire shall burn up his enemies. Psalm 97 verse 3. That fire shall lay hold of the withered trees, for then shall the dry trees be apparent. When it shall be said to them, I was hungry and you gave me not to eat, but on the other side, namely on the right, will be seen abundance of fruit and magnificence of leaves. The green will be eternity. To those then as with the trees it shall be said, Go into everlasting fire. For behold, it says, The axe is led to the root of the trees. Every tree therefore that brings not forth good fruit shall be cut down and cast into the fire. Matthew chapter 3 verse 10 let them then say of you, if you are growing in Christ, let men say of you, he deceived the people. This is said of Christ himself. It is said of the whole body of Christ. Think of the body of Christ still in the world. Think of it still on the threshing floor. See how it is blasphemed by the chaff. The chaff and the grain are indeed threshed together, but the chaff is consumed, the corn is purged. What was said of the Lord then avails for consolation, whenever it will be said of any Christian. Howbeit no man spoke openly of him for fear of the Jews, but who were they that did not speak of him for fear of the Jews? Undoubtedly they who said, He is a good man, not they who said, He deceived the people. As for men who said he deceived the people, their din was heard like the noise of dry leaves. He deceived the people, they sounded more and more loudly. He is a good man. They whispered more and more constrainedly. But now, brethren, notwithstanding that glory of Christ, which is to make us immortal, is not yet come, yet now I say his church so increases. He has deigned to spread it abroad through the whole world, that it is now only whispered, he deceives the people, and more and more loudly it sounds forth, he is a good man. <laughs>